Welcome. Welcome to you all to our sixth research conference for EMCC. And my name is Lise Lewis, and I'm the EMCC International President. And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you all here to this beautiful city of Budapest and this amazing weather. You can tell from my accent, I come from a very rainy England. We've had the wettest June in time immemorial. Um, and please don't mention the EU referendum, OK? I've, I've heard every single joke. I've heard every single comment. But you may surprise me and know something different. So uh, yes, we're, we're here to celebrate research and the importance of research in coaching and mentoring. And I'd just like to give you a little bit of history of the EMCC. Some of you I know will know that. So it's just a kind of revision for you. Um, for those of you that won't know it, and I can see a lot of new faces, and I always see potential members when I see new faces. I see new members, new faces. I thought I'd just give you a little bit of background about where we come from and what our philosophy is. So. The European Mentoring Council was born 24 years ago. And it, was a, it came about from a discussion between two people you may have heard of, Professor David Clutterbuck and Professor David Megginson. You must have seen one of their probably 75 publications each over the time in coaching and mentoring that they've written. Anyway, they were just having a chat one day, as academics do. And they said, what about setting up an organization? So the Mentoring Council was founded, European. Some 10 years later, coaching became more well-known, became very popular. So EMC became EMCC. So we became the European Mentoring and Coaching Council. And I have to say, I felt a little sad for mentoring because when I became president, I'm in my fifth year now, we didn't hear too much of mentoring. Coaching had become really popular. It had grown exponentially as soon as it arrived in Western Europe and traveled across to Eastern Europe. It just flew across Europe. So mentoring kind of lost its way a little. So I made it one of my missions when becoming president to raise that profile. So I'm delighted for anyone who's here speaking on mentoring. Thank you. Thank you for raising that profile. I'm getting a smile there, so a big thank you to you personally, OK? Also, uh, our, our roots are in research. We were founded on research. We were actually an organization that set out to raise standards in coaching and mentoring and professionalize what we do. So we were, we were never intended at the beginning to be a membership body. However, we are so wonderful and so exciting and doing so many leading edge things in the community that people said, I'd like to be a member. So we've become a membership body as well. We mainly have individual membership, but we're trying to grow our corporate membership as well. So if there's any companies here, please, please come and join as a corporate member. Have I done enough plugs now for membership? Now I'll move on. So, um, so that, that's a little bit of our history. Our accreditations, we have five of those now. That's where we were in raising the standards. We've got a quality award for training programs for coaching and mentoring. That's at four levels, at foundation, practitioner, senior practitioner, and master practitioner. And we've got the same for individual coaches and mentors to get individually accredited at those four levels. We then moved into coach supervision. Not quite added mentor supervision on there yet. I don't know why. So I, I kind of think we, we need to do that. But we grew a quality award called the European Supervision Quality Award, and that's for coach supervision programs to train super coach supervisors, obviously. And we also have the European Supervision Individual Accreditation for individual supervisors. So we would welcome those of you that have training programs to apply for accreditation. And we'd also welcome you as individuals either coaches, mentors, or coach supervisors, to get individually accredited. We're hearing much more now in the industry that organizations are looking for accredited coaches and mentors. So even though you might think, well, I'm not sure the value that I'm going to get from this, people that are training as coaches and mentors are looking for accredited programs. So bear that in mind. And organizations are looking for accredited coaches and mentors and coach supervisors. Okay, and our latest, soon to be launched, so don't miss it. Again, this is for corporates to 
get their internal coach mentoring programs accredited. So a lot of organizations now, you've probably heard, certainly it's happening in Western Europe, where organizations are growing their own coaching mentoring service. So they're still getting external practitioners in, of course, because they like to have a balance between the two, but they've realized that the resources that they have for development goes a bit further if they grow their own, so to speak. And so we've developed an accreditation, or in, in fact, we've inherited it from David Clutterbuck, and we've just tweaked it a bit. So it's an EMCC accreditation for internal programs. So there you go. There's a flavor of EMCC. I hope that I've kind of enticed you a little bit if you're not, well, in fact, I hope I've enticed you a lot, not a little bit, that if you're not members, to come and join us. I'm very happy to talk with anyone who wants to know more about EMCC and the work that we do. And I'm around for the next couple of days. Have a fabulous, fabulous conference. There's always a great buzz around EMCC conferences because I always think we gave a warm welcome and it's great for networking, but it's also really important for our learning, as we know, for our continuing professional development. So have a great time and I'll look forward to chatting with you individually as I see you over the next couple of days. Okay, so I'm going to hand over, and I've got to read this from a piece of paper because I want to get the pronunciation right. She's laughing. So I'd like to uh, introduce Kathleen Felvinci of Felvinci. Oh, thank you for being so forgiving of LT, who are kindly hosting our conference for us. Kathleen. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, good, I'm sorry. good afternoon to everyone and warm welcome on behalf of the Ötvastorland University, which is hosting the conference, but we are just providing you with the venue and with our uh, uh, warm-hearted welcome wishes. Uh, I don't want to take your precious time from the relevant uh, content-related information and, uh, and lectures, so just a few words about the Ötvastorland University for those who are not familiar with, the, uh, with this institution. Ötvastorland University is one of the, the oldest universities of Hungary. Uh, actually, it's functional since more than 380 years. And probably this is the, 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 the University of Hungary which is having the, the biggest audience uh, with our uh, eight faculties. Only two uh, disciplines are missing from our educational portfolio, and it is the medical faculty. We really miss, and we are really sorry that at the moment we don't have a medical faculty because it would make our offer even more complete. And the and, uh, technical and engineering is also missing, though we have some informatics which is uh, approaching uh, technical issues and, and engineering. Our faculty is one of the youngest at the university. The interesting thing is that, uh, so we have an old university. Uh, we have at the moment eight faculties, but for more than 250 years, we had just three faculties. And during the last few years, we are uh, producing newer and newer faculties. So among them, it is the Faculty of Education and Psych Psychology. Previously, we belonged to Faculty of Humanities or faculty, faculty of Arts. But at the moment, as we were growing, especially Institute of Psychology was growing uh, rapidly, uh, it uh, seemed to be ration, a ra rational decision to initiate and establish a new faculty, which is dealing with uh, psychology, with, uh, with teacher education, with different type of uh, of training of educational uh, professionals. We have an institution which is dealing with uh, health education and health sciences, not medical faculty, health sciences, health education, uh, the training of uh, coaches, but these coaches are very special ones. These are the coaches working in the field of recreation. And, um, we have a very important uh, institution which is dealing with intercultural issues. Uh, so that's our faculty, which is happy to have you here. And, it, and the building belongs to the Institute of Psychology, uh, which is uh, fairly big. 
and fairly ambitious, and is also happy to have the opportunity to welcome you here. Um, just to give some kind of um, a rational, a rational why we are so uh, keen and ready to provide you with the venue and to think about the future op opportunities of collaboration is that um, you probably know that all the institutions, even the higher education institutions, are expected to develop so-called developmental plans. And uh, our development, uh, most recent uh, plan of development was approved, I think, two months ago or six weeks ago. And uh, there are uh, a few uh, really strong pillars in it. One of them is to make our, our uh, uh, scientific life, our research portfolio, and, and our educational portfolio very much directed to the international uh, audience and to, uh, to have as many international European projects as we can and to have uh, uh, university students partly through the Erasmus program and partly through uh, full-fledged uh, educational programs from different countries. Among these full-fledged educational programs, uh, the Institute of Psychology is really uh, very well achieving as we have uh, more than, on one grade we have more than 100 international students who are receiving their diplomas here in Hungary. So we are having a full-fledged uh, university program in psychology and we have an MA in uh, intercultural uh, education and psychology. So we are we, uh, not just thinking about becoming international, we are doing and we are trying to be international. But the other thing, and that, that's something which might uh, create a link between your conference and your, uh, your association or organization and uh, our faculty and our institution is that we, that we think that to open towards uh, everyday life, the everyday practice is more than important. Uh, university uh, education and training programs are, uh, in many cases, uh, very much theory-oriented. Of course, we are proud of our educational system, which is theory-oriented, but we also know that even the best theory is good for nothing if we are not able to link it with everyday life. So this is the so-called third mission of the, of the uh, science universities, and we take it uh, very seriously. And uh, that's the real reason we are so happy and we were so much ready uh, to have this collaboration with your organization and to host this conference. And I really hope that you will have uh, uh, very useful and very fruitful discussions during these days. You will learn a lot. A lot of new research will evolve as a, as a consequence of a result of this discussion. And I wish you, uh, I wish you a, a good conference, and I also hope that you would really be able to enjoy a bit this wonderful city, Budapest, uh, where I always wanted to be a tourist. So please, enjoy being here. Then thank you for the opportunity. It is my duty to welcome you for the third time. My name is Zoltan Chigas, and I am the Vice President of Research for International, EMCC International. And I've planned lots of thoughts for this introduction, but I've decided to come down to a, a few highlights, as I have a number of technicalities that I have to share with you. And the first thought that came to my mind when I was preparing for the opening of this conference is the way how research can create value. And obviously, obviously for me. The first way how we see the value creation of research is the individual perspective. And I guess when I'm usually joining a conference, I'm taking these glasses with me, this individual perspective that I get to learn something, that I'm getting inspiration, I'm learning new tools, new approaches, new whatever. And I think this is very, very important. It's, well, it's the key why I'm usually joining a conference. As I was thinking, a second thought came to my mind, and that was the importance of communities, and the whole importance of 
professional communities. And as coaching and mentoring is facing new challenges in the, in the world itself, most notably the questions of professionalization, I think the importance of having professional communities, knowledge sharing within professional communities and across these communities, this becomes more and more important. And this is my invitation for you to think of this conference not as just as a place where you can learn for yourself, but as a place where you can get inspiration for your own personal and professional communities. And to bring back everything that you have learned and got here to your communities, to your people, and share it with everyone else. Because I think this is a, a hub, a focal point for discussions. And whatever we learn here should be spread throughout the world to make it more impactful. I think that's, that's the key idea from me, that this should not be just a meeting of minds here, but a meeting of communities. And you are all representing your own communities from a number of different countries, professions, backgrounds. And I'm really happy to have conversations amongst all of those communities that you are representing. And this is my invitation for you all to, to be here both as individuals and as members of your professional community and to exchange whatever you have, your insights, your questions, your dilemmas, and get to a fruitful conversation with everyone. Because I think these conversations are the key ways how we can bridge the gap between research and practice and how we can move our own individual, pers individual practices from good to great or even beyond. So that's my invitation for you all to have inspiring conversations and to enjoy the for two days of the program. And for those, we have a number of technicalities that you should all be aware of. One of them is that you have already found, I guess, or I hope, of a thought-provoking report that we have prepared for, for the conference, the Research Provocations Report, which had been handed out to your seats. And this is the first in a series that we are planning to publish in the upcoming future. And this very first report consists of the key questions that we would like to highlight in the upcoming months. What are the questions that, that research needs to address? How should we think about research? And how should we involve people in research? These are the focal points that we have addressed here. And I'm very much open to hear your insights and your comments regarding all the thoughts that we have put into this report. This should be one of the first thought-provoking things that you meet at the conference. The second thing is that we are going to have a short open space session tomorrow morning to have your own questions discussed and to bring in your insights to the conversation, to give you the power to, f to shape the conversation around research. And my invitation for it, for all of you, is to bring your questions to us. We've set up a big board right next to the registration desk with some pens, post-its, whatever else, so please share your questions, share your thoughts and dilemmas, and put it up the wall, because then we can collect them, make a digitalized decentralization of them, and we can bring your questions to the discussions that will take place tomorrow morning. So please don't hold back yourself, and share whatever you have in your mind that should be worthy enough to be discussed here. Because I think that's going to inspire us for even more and more excellent ideas and thinkings. I know this is the place where I have to take a look at all the technicalities because there are a number of things that I have to share with you. The next one being that the discussions shouldn't just be limited to the sessions themselves and all of you are welcome to join us at the, at the drink at the end of the conference which depending on the weather will be either held at the garden in the middle of the, of the building. So if we are going to have a nice weather, then you are all welcome to join us for a drink and for some further discussions. If we are going to have a bad weather, I really doubt that that's going to happen, then we are going to have the drinks right at the reception area. And even after that, we are inviting you to be with us because we invite all of you to organize ways how we can get out to dinner. Some of the volunteers will be around to show you some nice places. And please feel free to team up with us and continue your discussions with us. Or just take a long walk at the roads of Budapest at night. Well, they are quite safe, so well, you can do that without special assistance. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the other things that I have to share with you? Ta-da!
Yes, because these are technicalities. For all of the sessions, you are going to find uh, evaluation cards, and, I, and we are inviting you all to use those cards and handle those cards back to the room hosts who are going to collect them. This will provide us with invaluable feedback regarding how you see what's happening here. Another card that I have to call your attention to is a CPD card that all of you have received as a part of your conference bag. Or if you haven't, then you can find some at the registration desk. Please mark the sessions that you've been in. In this way, you can make a track record of where you've been, and you can have a proof of your continuous professional development, and you can get your official stamps of EMCC at the registration desk. And all of your attendance sheets and other materials will be emailed to you at the end of the conference. And besides that, you are going to receive a list of all the attendees with contact information for networking purposes, again, in your mailboxes. And you will be able to find a book stall right next to a registration desk with some interesting books, some previous EMCC conference publications. Please take a look at them and find some interesting things to read. And if you are interested in buying them, well, there's a good opportunity to spend your money here at the conference. And the last thing that I have to share with you is the health and safety thing that, well, please take care of your own selves, especially in this heat wave. We have not planned any uh, alarms or whatever, so if you are hearing a fire alarm, that would really mean a fire, so please calmly leave the building so you are the nearest exit. And, uh, well, that was partial a joke, but I guess my sense of humor should be improved in the upcoming few days. And the last thing is that if you happen to have any further questions, then you will always be able to find a colleague at the registration desk. We are going to wear scarves or neckties with EMCC logos. Please feel free to come to us and post your questions. I'm quite sure that someone will have a quite calming answer for all of them. Thank you very much. Please enjoy the two days and let me introduce the keynote speakers, or let me just give the word for them if you are okay with that. Thank you very much.